The Global Caregivers Network presents the first annual Global Male Caregivers Summit coming your way April 13th, 2024, beginning at 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Register on Eventbrite to hear from the most amazing and powerfully inspiring men as they share caregiving from the male perspective. Grab your ticket today and we'll see you there. Thank you so much, Cheryl, for having me. Um, such an honor and a privilege to be in this platform today. Um, you know, I think it's a very good, uh, for me, I feel like I'm I'm so privileged to be at the last part um, just because I was able to hear a lot of the impactful and powerful stories of my fellow male caregivers and nurses who have been sharing their lives work, you know, um, with their immediate family and even with the community. So, um, Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, wherever you're in the world. Um, shout out to my friends in the Philippines who are watching right now. I know it's like past midnight there, but thank you for hanging out with me. And um, again, my name is Arnold. I am a nurse, an educator, and a leader. And um, I, um, I I started my caregiving journey when I was in high school. Um, and I, I guess, you know, the, the caregiving journey um, really led me to my profession right now as a nurse. Because um, when I was in high school, both my grandparents were sick. Uh, my, my grandfather had um, um, a COPD, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and my grandma had um, Parkinson's disease. So they really needed help and um, caregivers, you know. And in my 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 family, including myself, were their caregivers um, while they were alive, and I'm I'm so grateful to have that opportunity to serve them, um, at, because again they've influenced my decision to become a nurse. So I would actually like to share my screen and because um, I have some things to talk about. Okay, so my talk for um, to uh, for for this session. Um, We'll focus on bridging borders, empowering male nurses and caregivers in the healthcare, um, in the global healthcare arena. And um, as, as you can see, I'm a Filipino nurse, and I've I've moved from the Philippines to the Middle East and to the United States, and I've really seen a lot of challenges um, among the um, healthcare sector, particularly for for male caregivers, right? Because different cultures, different countries have uh, differences in terms of um, how they perceive the caregiving and nursing profession. So um, for my learning outcomes, we're going to be talking about uh, the, the current global healthcare landscape, some of the challenges um, faced by male nurses and caregivers, what's the impact of gender diversity on patient outcomes, how can we as male caregivers and nurses overcome the barriers, and uh, how can we leverage our unique backgrounds, um, how can we advocate and um, build our community? And what are the future directions and call to action for all the stakeholders within the healthcare community? So let me start this talk with a quote that caregiving and nursing knows no gender. So I'm not so sure if my screen is being shared um, in the live stream because I'm looking at Facebook and I cannot see my screen, but um, I'd like to emphasize that caregiving, um, whether you're you're a man, you're a woman, you're a member of the LGBTQ um, community, caregiving is embedded and ingrained in all of us. And, um, you know, you, you don't have, because there's, I think, you know, this preconceived thought that caregiving and nursing is mainly for, for women. And, and that's the reason why um, a lot of men sometimes do not even identify themselves as a caregiver because of that societal stigma. So let's look at the statistics in terms of numbers of men in, in the global healthcare landscape. And um, unfortunately, I don't really have the uh, the statistics on a global scale, but I do have some from the United States and um, in the UK. So according to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, um, in, in 2023, men represent nearly 12% of all um, nurses across the different uh, nursing subspecializations, whether you're an LPN, an, a registered nurse, a nurse practitioner, um, only 12% um, of those professionals are actually men or male. Um, but this is actually a better number as compared to 10 years before, because 10 years before, um, 
it's definitely much lesser. So there is a trend, as you can see here, um, from 2005, there's, there's indeed um, an upward trend of men going into nursing. And this trend is not just here in the United States. So if I go back to my previous slide, um, you can also see that even in the UK, there is an imbalance in terms of the gender. So um, as you can see here, you can uh, it's like around 90% of, of the uh, care providers, you know, are mostly females as opposed to the males or the men in, in nursing. And there are a lot of reasons why this is evident in our current landscape. You know, there's a lot of challenges. And one thing that I could say is the the, the primary reason why it's happening is the societal stereotypes um, about the healthcare profession, about the caregiving and nursing profession. So I can vividly remember when I started nursing school, um, I was asked by, by, by some of our neighbors, like, what, what course are you going to take when, when you go to university? And I was like, I'm, I'm going to take up nursing. And then they said, like, um, why are you going to take up nursing? Why are, you, why, why are you not taking up um, medicine? Because, like, isn't it that nursing is for women only? So even, you know, um, and, and that was like around 2004 when I started nursing. So even in the er early 2000s, um, there's still that um, different perception on what nursing and caregiving is. And I guess, you know, there's there's a lot of those so, uh, societal perceptions. And one is that men are less emotionally suited for nursing. So we always think that it's only women who have the emotions um, and, and are capable of taking care of um, individuals, right? But the reality is all of us are actually built with emotions. You know, as, as a human being, we have emotions and you don't have to be a woman for you to feel empathetic to another person who is in need of care, right? So um, this is definitely a myth and that I can attest, you know, I've worked with a lot of um, male caregivers, men in nursing who are as emotionally, um, I would say emotionally competent, you know, because um, and are emotionally capable of providing care to our um, patient population. And then there is this role coming and identity as well. And again, you know, this can stem from the stigma um, within the community that nursing and caregiving is mostly provided by um, females because they are the only ones um, who can provide proper care. Another factor is recruitment and retention issues. And because of those stigmas, it's sometimes difficult for us to actually recruit um, and even um, bring nurses or bring men into the nursing profession. Because in, in some of their cultures, they don't usually think of nursing again, you know, as, as a man's job. So when I was working in the Middle East, um, I taught in the university and I really noticed that there was zero men um, who enrolled in um, the nursing degree. So all my students were females. And it just shows that in some other cultures, and even maybe sometimes in the Philippines, it's as much as the Philippines now is really sort of like opening and um, are uh, they, they are having a different perspective of what nursing is and what nurses can do. Um, there are still some, you know, like in, in, in the provinces, for example, who would think that nursing is really just for women and not for men. And because of that, a lot of the men who are in nursing tend to leave the bedside, for example, because they would think that, oh, this is not for me because this is for women. When in fact, it can be, you know, there's a lot of subspecializations in nursing. Um, and I would I would say that in all those subspecializations, men are capable of, of being there, even in pediatrics. So at, at one point in my career, when I was in the Middle East, I was a pediatric nurse. I, I am still a nurse, um, but not necessarily working at the bedside now. Um, but I was able to take care of babies. You know, I, I provided the right care, the right love, the right TLC for my pediatric patients, the same way my female counterparts, my the female nurses did. So, uh, we should try to sort of remove that stigma that nursing and caregiving is just for females. Um, there is also this issue in the career tra trajectory and specialization choices. So 
now that you know uh, I have moved to the United States, I've seen a lot of different sub specializations that a nurse can go into, but I've noticed that some of the sub specializations are still filled with more women as opposed to have uh, having like sort of like a balance of men and women in the sub specialization. And most of the sub specializations that um, male nurses go to are those that are sort of like more masculine. Uh, more on the go, you know, like in the emergency department, in the operating room, and other stuff like that. Um, there's not a lot of um, men uh, or male nurses who usually goes to um, OBGYN or pediatrics because, again, you know, I, I think there's this concept that only those who are very caring, very nurturing um, should go to this type of uh, subspecialties. But, you know, men, um, again, can be nurturing and can be caring. And I think one thing we have to understand is that this imbalance in gender diversity can actually impact the care, right? Because we care for a diverse patient population. We are not just caring for female patients. We also care for um, male patients. And who can better understand a male patient than a male caregiver or a male nurse, right? So um, gender diversity in healthcare, particularly in nurse and caregiving, can definitely uh, have a, a, an impact and they play a crucial role in enhancing patient care. Um, first, they they impact and, and enhance a balanced caregiving approach. Um, again, you know, when I was working in the Middle East, because of the cultural nuances, um, male, male caregivers can only care for male patients, whereas the female caregivers can care for both. So those are some of the challenges. Um, but then, you know, like if, if, if there is no male caregiver, if there's no no men in nursing, um, there might be things that a male patient um, will not be comfortable talking about when they are being cared for by female nurses or by women, right? So um, it, it really, it can really enhance um, the approach of care and uh, can provide, I would say, like gender specific care, because there will always be some differences in, in the gender needs, right? Um, it can um, also enhance cultural sensitivity, as I mentioned. Like it really depends on where in the world you are, but there are still cultures, and we respect that. There are still cultures that, uh, not necessarily, for lack of better words, divides the men and the women, but you know that's the cultural thing, and and we respect that, and that's why it's important to also like build the, the a community or like a pipeline of male nurses because who would then provide. Um, culturally specific or cultural sensitive care um, for those men who are not comfortable being cared for by women, right? Um, men bring, br they bring a diversity of thought in caregiving and in nursing. And this is the reason why it's always good to work in, um, in, in a workplace or a community where you have a diverse team member, you know, it's not just all women, but you also have men. Um, and then you can exchange ideas on how you can approach a specific problem and how can you provide care, right? Um, gender diversity and, you know, bringing in men can also provide a positive role modeling for the younger men. Because um, the more they see men in nursing, the more they see men in caregiving. And, you know, like, I hope that a lot of young men are actually watching this um, uh, global summit because like you've seen how all of the speakers prior to me really provided and gave their heart out, right? Like they pour their hearts out um, in providing care for, for their families, for their loved ones, and sharing that love uh, for caregiving within the community. And then it also fosters community trust and engagement because that then means that, you know, men are being included in the conversations and caregiving, um, and then they will feel that they belong, right? Um, it can enhance broader health monitoring and it can decrease healthcare disparity. So again, it's it's so important for us to drive uh, the presence of men in caregiving and nursing. So how can we overcome those barriers? You know, we've we've heard a lot of the barriers um, and the the struggles that we have as as male caregivers. Um, so first and foremost, it's always good to build a supportive network. This is definitely one. A supportive network. So when Sheryl asked me to join in, I was like, yes, that's a no-brainer. Like, I would definitely love to be part um, of this network and in, in this summit because I want to uh, connect with my fellow caregivers and male nurses who are actively um, providing their services, you know, and uh, actively 
um, inspiring others to be in this field of specialty. Um, I guess another for, for nurses, there's um, there's also some professional organizations that you can join in. Um, one that I know of here in America is the American Association of Men in Nursing. So there's definitely one. And I'm sure that other professional organizations will have their smaller circles as well um, for men in nursing. And then let's challenge stereotypes through public engagement. And again, you know, I'm, I'm just so proud of the fellow caregivers who have spoken ahead of me um, because they're definitely challenging stereotypes, you know, um, sharing videos of their, them taking care of their family members and how they overcome all the, um, the burnout, the challenges that they've encountered. Uh, for me, that's, that's really amazing. And the great, I think the good thing that we have right now is the availability of social media because it really gives us a platform to showcase not just in our in our smaller community but to the entire world that yes we are men we are capable of providing you know um the TLC that our that our um patients parents our loved ones need and um you know we can as as male caregivers we can definitely go to schools for example um to showcase what we do and inspire the younger generations um, to hopefully follow our footsteps and, and provide our service and work in the caregiving and nursing or the healthcare professions. And then we, we have to advocate for diverse uh, patient needs too. So as I mentioned earlier, some, you know, for us to provide uh, maybe gender specific or culturally sensitive care, um, there needs to be more nurses because we also have a lot of male patients, right? Um, and again, it's always, for me as a male, if and when and I've been hospitalized, of course, it's more comfortable to talk to a um, male nurse about some other things, um, just because it's it's easy, you know, you don't have to try to hide it or you don't have to, to look for a metaphor so that you can explain what you are trying to say, right? Because they're like, as a man, then, then I you can relate to me as as a man as a male caregiver. And then we bring in uh, a diverse skills and experience. So that's another thing. As, as I mentioned earlier, um, we can work in various fields, right? It's not just the emergency department. It's just it's it's not just the operating room. Um, we can we can work in pediatrics. We can work um, in like long-term cares and stuff like that. So there's, we really bring in a lot of our skills and expertise into this profession. And then we pursue specialized training. So a lot of, um, I know that a lot of the uh, male caregivers that I know, um, and even the male caregivers have, that have spoken before me, you know, like they've shared that they have gone through coaching. They themselves are now coaches as well. How amazing is that, right? Um, to to, to learn and grow yourself as a caregiver, as a nurse, and at the same time, give back to the community so that you can um, train and let and, and nurture others who are in the on that field of specialization. And then you can definitely enhance leadership skills. So um, again, you know, I know that there's a lot of women in the nursing profession, and sometimes you might see that in the majority of the nursing organizations, because there's a lot of nursing organizations, um, you might you might mostly see um, women as the leaders, but I've seen a lot of men as well stepping up into leadership skills in traditionally women-led uh, professions, which is really amazing. And another thing is to just engage in policy and advocacy. So one thing that I've learned um, here in the United States is that it's it's good that we have a voice, right? That we advocate, we use social media, but it's also good that we impact policy and advocacy because if if you don't actually bring yourself to the table and, you know, like if, if you will not be given a seat at the table, try to maybe build your own chair and build your own table um, for you to have that voice so that maybe policies and laws um, will be generated based on that, you know, and hopefully those policies and laws will actually enhance the recruitment, retention, the education of men um, in caregiving and the nursing profession. And of course, contribute to nursing education and research. Um, there has been a lot of push, I think over the last few decades, you know, um, research and education has really been a, a massive influencer in terms of, um, the, in the nursing profession and the caregiving profession, because we always believe in evidence-based care, right? And the fact of the matter is, whatever is whatever was true before might have changed over time. 
And uh, with that, you know, that's why we, we need to continuously um, search for new information and search what is working, what is what does the evidence say? And um, if we men in nursing can actually prove that, yes, there's definitely um, an impact, because we all know that there is um, an impact of having more men or having like an equal number, number of men in, in the nursing profession, then that can, again, enhance or maybe encourage and motivate more uh, younger men to pursue the caregiving and nursing professions. And of course, collaborate with the uh, different disciplines. You know, we work, um, a lot of us male caregivers and nurses work with a multidisciplinary team. So it's very important for us to make sure that we collaborate with them, we work with them to make sure that we uplift the image of men and uh, men in nursing the caregiving fields. So, you know, once once you're out there, you know, as as, as male caregivers, as men in nursing, make sure that you engage with your network. You join and participate organizations, actively participate in health uh, in, in organizations to so make sure that men in those professional organizations are actually visible, right? You attend conferences and workshops. So far, I've I've um, you know I've been attending some of the conferences um, as much as I can, and it has always been like a good opportunity to meet like-minded professionals, leaders, nurses, um, who are really advocating, you know, for for our professions. Volunteer too, you know, if, if you have some spare time. And um, volunteering doesn't have to be like an official volunteering um, platform in an organization. Even, I think a lot of, of, of the male caregivers and nurses who have spoken ahead of me um, are volunteering their own time, you know, to advocate through social media, to, to give visibility to men um, in the caregiving um, area. And then if you're into research, please do conduct those research, the publish and then contribute because that will then become part of the pool of knowledge um, for the next generations of men in nursing to come. And mentorship is very important. There's definitely a lot in there, um, it, it, you know, like if you go into LinkedIn or if you join healthcare, um, professional organizations, um, if you see uh, a man there that you you think will be a good mentor for you, try to reach out because I'm sure that they will be very happy to share what they know to help you develop professionally or even maybe personally, right? Um, so it's, it's really very important for us to engage and not just be a passive um, watcher of what is going on um, in, in our current healthcare landscape. And I guess to end this, like there, I'd like to have a call to action for the different stakeholders of healthcare, right? So to all the healthcare leaders and administrators who are watching right now, um, we need to invest in targeted recruitment and retention that are uh, strategic enough to attract men into nursing and caregiving roles. I know sometimes, again, it can be a bit challenging, but um, you know, showcasing that your organizations are actually um, providing opportunities for men to grow and uh, to go up the ladder, to develop themselves um, as leaders too, that will definitely, um, I would say, attract men to pursue nursing and caregiving roles. Um, for the educational institutions who are providing um, training um, to our caregivers and nurses, uh, I, I, I personally believe that this is a high time for us to review, reevaluate, and maybe even revise our curriculum and make sure that, um, we include and engage more male participants, right? Um, there needs to be an education that, again, nursing and caregiving is not just for women. To the professional organizations and advocacy groups, we have to strengthen our efforts to support male nurses, um, establish mentorship programs, you know, make it available to the men out there in, the, in healthcare professions so that somebody can actually teach them, share with them what are the, the things that they need to learn um, so that they can also help other men in the caregiving and uh, nursing roles. Provide career development opportunities and then advocate for men in the workforce. To my fellow male nurses and caregivers, let us become the role models and advocate within the profession. You know, talk about what we do, talk about the impact that we have in the community, not just within your family, but in, in, in the big the bigger network that you have reached, right? Like, um, again, social media is a very good platform for us, you know, um, 
So utilize social media, talk about what you do as a male nurse, as a male caregiver. Um, and then to the society at large um, who are watching right now, shift the cultural perception of nursing as a gender specific role. I think we are now in an era where, you know, whatever women can do, men can do. And and vice versa, right? Because like uh, before, there's also this massive thing that sometimes there are things that men can do and women cannot. But really, we we are in the 21st century. It's, it's very different from how it was um, a long time ago. So let's change the perception of nursing and caregiving as a you know as as a profession for for females only because it's not and. Let's promote nursing and caregiving as a pre prestigious, vital, and rewarding career choice for, for everyone because it really is, you know. Um, I guess all the male caregivers and male nurses who are watching right now and who are with me in this um, stage would definitely agree that whatever we do is really self, it's, it's very fulfilling, right? Um, for me, what I do right now, um, it really fills my cup as a person. And um, I feel like I'm contributing something to the society at large. So these are my references. Uh, if you want to look into more of the things that I've talked about, I'd be happy to share my slides. And I'd like to leave you with my own quote that empowering men to embrace roles in nursing and caregiving not only diver diversifies our healthcare landscape, but also strengthens our collective capacity to meet the challenges of contemporary healthcare. And with that, I'd like to thank you all for joining me in my session. And um, if you are in LinkedIn, I would love to connect with you. Um, you can search for my name, Jose Arnold Tariga. Be part of my network because I'd love to learn and engage with you in the platform. And I'm throwing it back to you, Cheryl. The Global Caregivers Network presents the first annual Global Male Caregivers Summit Coming your way April 13th, 2024, beginning at 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Register on Eventbrite to hear from the most amazing and powerfully inspiring men as they share caregiving from the male perspective. Grab your ticket today and we'll see you there.